Test. Test. And test. Testing. 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 Swab testing. Blood tests. Remember, there are two kinds of tests. The, the, the antigen or the antibody tests. Whether these tests are useful or whether the government has just wasted millions of pounds. Well, I want to check that we're talking about the same tests here. So, what are the different coronavirus tests and how can they help? There are two main tests to discuss. The first one I'm going to talk about is the PCR-based test. It's the one that can diagnose whether or not you have COVID-19. This is virologist Davey Smith. He's going to walk us through how it works. For the PCR-based test, we're going to be looking for the virus in somebody's nose. And what we do is we take a swab, and they're going to go really far back. And the reason they're going to go far back is that the virus lives way in the back of people's nose. And we want to make sure that we get a good sampling. One of the biggest reasons that a test comes back negative, what we call false negative, is that we don't get enough sampling. So, for context, COVID-19 has something called RNA inside it. RNA is a bit like DNA, but instead of a paired double strand, It only has a single strand, and this is surrounded by a fatty membrane, which is covered in spike proteins. That's essentially all the virus is. So this virus uses RNA as its genetic material, so we want to extract that RNA out. And once we extract that RNA out, we then copy that RNA from RNA into DNA, and that's called reverse transcription. So now, if the virus is there, it's in a DNA form. Once it's in a DNA form, we can then put it into a PCR reaction. And there we take little things called primers, which are short snippets of DNA, and they match the DNA that we're looking for. So if it finds the virus DNA, it should attach to it. And it starts a chemical reaction that we can use to copy the virus. What's going on here is pretty straightforward. You're basically making copies of the virus and multiplying it again and again until you have billions of copies. Then you can see whether your sample looks like COVID-19 or it doesn't. And the great thing about this test is it's really specific and sensitive. It can detect as little as one virus particle just from a swab. The PCR tests are very accurate. When they find a virus, they tell you they found it and you can believe it. If they don't find a virus, some of those tests just aren't good enough to rely on a negative test. You still have to use your clinical suspicion, like, am I still coughing? Am I short of breath? Is there nothing there? But a positive test on a PCR means positive. The only problem is that it takes quite a long time. Running the test takes anywhere between 20 minutes and a few hours. This could take even longer in the UK, sometimes days, because at the moment you need to complete the testing in a laboratory and there are a limited number of test sites. So, that's the first test. Then we've got the serology test, or antibody test, as it's often called. Antibodies live in our blood, for the most part, and that's where we can detect them, so it usually is a blood test. There are some tests that are coming out that are trying to just prick somebody's finger and be able to get the blood out of there to do it. So we can measure that antibody. Antibodies are small proteins produced by your immune system. Some of these attack a virus and neutralize it and they remain in your body for months or even years afterwards, continuing to provide protection. So if you've got lots of the right antibodies in your system for fighting COVID-19, then you've probably had COVID-19 and possibly have some level of immunity. Running the test is incredibly fast. You can potentially get results in a matter of seconds. The problem with these tests is that many of the products on the market at the moment are simply not accurate enough. We don't have the best testing possible. We still don't have them as specific or sensitive, meaning that they can detect the antibody when it's there or not detect it and say truly that it's negative if it's not there. So in the population overall, there might be lots of people who've had this infection that we just don't know about. And right now we're sort of blind. The only tests that we have that are working really well are those PCR tests to know who has it right now. Okay, so let's say hypothetically, that we've solved all the problems of speed, availability, and accuracy. We can test as many people as we want and get the accurate results we need. What would all this testing tell us? And what could we do with this information? At the beginning of an epidemic like this, we really need to know who has it and who's spreading it. And that's where we use the PCR test. Then you can do isolation procedures and you can contact everybody that they've been in close contact with. And if we randomly do it, then that gives us a very good picture of how it might happen across the population. And the serology test will really help us 
understand how to control it perhaps in the future, who needs to be targeted for isolation, et cetera, et cetera. So having those sorts of tests can really help us understand how the epidemic goes through a population. So if we test on a massive scale and amass enough data, it would help us to do all sorts of things, like helping key workers get back to work, protecting more vulnerable people, managing certain groups who are more likely to spread it, and eventually enable us to unlock the lockdown. But even if our testing was up there with the likes of Germany or South Korea, there's still so much more we need to do to get out of this crisis. Testing alone won't fix it. The way to get out of a pandemic is through science. And at the moment, we haven't done that very well. So we need more resources in the trials for vaccines to get more diagnostics out there and to get treatments. That, for me, is my biggest frustration.